Today, I'm gonna to be building a modern floating nightstand. It's gonna have mitered corners, an inset drawer front, undermount slides, and a French cleat. Just like any other build, with this build, there's a million ways to skin a cat. We could build it out of hardwood, plywood, or MDF, and you could just paint it and make it real simple. But I want this to be fancy because I'm a fancy boy. And this is gonna be going in my office, which has my really nice desk in it. And that desk was made of big leaf Western maple. You can get a multitude of different plywood options from the hardwood dealer. They'll have a lot of different wood species, but they just don't have every species because they can't make money on every species. So it comes down to the person who needs that specific type of plywood to make it themselves. And that's what we're gonna do today because I very much want to use this big leaf Western maple. So why am I going with plywood? And that's a great question because sometimes you associate like cheap furniture with plywood. But the bottom line is plywood is very stable. I could absolutely make this nightstand out of hardwood, but what could possibly happen is when I cut my piece down to like 19 inches long, come back a few hours later, that can bow on me. With plywood, it doesn't do that. It can bow if you get it in a really wet situation, but typically it's extremely stable and it doesn't do that. And the bottom line is the reason I wanna make plywood is because I can have better control. And like I said before, I wanna use this big leaf Western maple, but they don't make it in plywood. So I have to make it if I wanna use this. But the other thing is I can make the, the veneers as thin or as thick as I like. And why that's beneficial is because typically when you get plywood from the hardwood store, that veneer of hardwood on the outside is 0.5 millimeters. It's very small. And if you ding it, good luck fixing it without sanding through the veneer. So let's talk about how I'm gonna make my ply. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down my substrate, which is this MDF, or the middle part of the sandwich, and then I'm gonna make the outside of the sandwich, which is the veneers, out of this big leaf western maple. Let's get going. My veneers are cut and they've been sanded on the drum sander to the same thickness. So now I need to seam them together because my pieces aren't wide enough for my panels. So I'm gonna have to basically do a book match, glue them together like a regular glue joint, and then glue that panel to the other panel. To get a nice seam, one of my favorite methods is to use my track saw. I'm gonna take my mating pieces, these two right here. I just wanna check them real fast, make sure they're what I want. I'm gonna make sure those edges or those joints are going to be on the same side. I'm gonna put them on this board here. I'm gonna use my hold fast to hold it in place so it doesn't move around. And I'm gonna take my track, lay it over the top. And I just wanna expose a small amount of material so that when my saw is running down here, it's cutting off some material so I can get the same edge on both sides.
I've laid out all of my veneers and they're ready to be glued to the substrate. So let's talk about this process. If you've never used a vacuum bag or made your own veneers, it is a really cool process. We're gonna take our substrate, we're gonna slather a ton of glue over it, and then we're gonna put our veneer on it. On this backer panel, we're only gonna be putting veneer on one side. That'll be our show side. But on the carcass panels, we're gonna be putting veneer on one side, and then we're gonna flip this piece over, and then we're gonna put the veneer on the other side. Uh, you can see that I left the tape on here. This is just to kind of keep the seam together. I, we've had plenty of glue up time, it should be just fine. In an ideal situation, this would be one long panel that I would put one front and one back on, but my stock wasn't long enough, so I had to make it into two panels. So this panel will represent the top and the side, and this panel will represent the bottom and the side. The glue I use is Unibond 1, and this was recommended to me when I first started doing veneers, and it's worked really well, so I've had no need to change. The glue roller I use is this. I'll put the link in the description, but this is a nice foam glue roller. You fill it from the top. As you roll it out, it automatically puts glue on this thing. Now let's talk about the vacuum pressing system. I use a product from VacuPress. This machine sucks the air out of this system, and this is the vacuum bag. You end up closing this up, zipping it up, turning this on, and it sucks all the air out of this, and the top ends up clamping down on the platen, which is this white melamine substrate here. You can see this grid that's in here. I had the CNC cut these eighth inch wide by eighth inch deep channels, and it allows the air to get pulled towards this outlet where the air gets sucked out. Okay, we're on to day two and the panels are out of the bag. I've got a bunch of stuff left to do, but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna flush trim all the overhanging material, drum sand them to the same thickness, then we're gonna cut them to their rough size and then add the groove for the back panel. cut down to the rough sizes, we now have really ugly exposed MDF cores, which I don't like at all, and I'm gonna hide them with wood. Uh, this is just offcuts from the other veneers that I use. They ended up working out really great, so I'm gonna get some glue on these. I'm gonna apply a real generous amount of glue on this because the MDF really, really soaks it up, and I don't want this to break free because it'll be really hard to fix later on. Also, I just don't wanna do shoddy work. Once you got a nice good coat of glue on here, it's gonna lay your piece on, and I'm just gonna use this tape, this green tape I really like. It's great for joints, for glue ups and stuff. I'm gonna use this to hold it in place like a clamp. So you can see it's sliding around there, but just give it a good amount of force pulling down. This one's good to go. I'm gonna set it aside and get these other three done right now. You probably noticed that the edge banding is a little oversized for the pieces. That's because after it's all dry, I'm going to come back with a flush trim bit and get it all cleaned up. Panel is all cleaned up, our banding is all flushed up and looking great. The next step is to get this cut to its final size and cut for the joinery, which I'm gonna be doing a miter fold around the entire thing. There's a few ways you can approach this. You could throw some dominoes in there or dowels or some other reinforcing method, but it's not really necessary for this because there is so much glue surface area when we cut the miter and because this is MDF, 
It's not like actually wood, it's just like wood pulp and like pig hoofs and stuff. So you can glue it all together and it like won't pull itself apart over time. To cut the miters, I'm gonna be using this miter sled. Uh, it's pretty no frills, it's just a piece of plywood that I cut a miter on and it's gonna be ready to rock and roll. For the stop, I'm using the Bents Woodworking patented stop block. After I cut my miters, I'm gonna do a dry fit and then I'm gonna sand it all up and I'm gonna get ready to pre-finish the inside so I don't have to when it's all put together. For the finish, I'm gonna use a hard wax oil simply because I like how quickly I can work with the pieces after I put the finish on. After the finish is on, I'm gonna start doing the glue up, which I'm gonna use the tape method on the miters. So let's get going. is out of clamps, I got it all cleaned up, ready to start getting the finishing process going. But the next step is gonna be to build the drawer box, which I'm gonna do on my CNC, and then also get the undermount slides attached. So once I get the pieces all cut out on the CNC, we'll start talking about how we're gonna build the drawer box.
Let's talk about the drawer box construction. For mine, I use blind dados here. You can see that the, the actual back and front are just dadoed into the sides. You don't need to get fancy with it. You could use butt joints and pocket hole screws. In fact, pocket hole screws are really great for use in cabinetry. I did mine on my CNC, it's overkill. I just don't like doing these on the table saw. But the table saw and the track saw are a great way to do your drawer boxes. For the drawer box, I use cherry ply. You can use any ply. You don't even have to use ply. I use ply for the same reason I made my ply for the carcass. It's just really stable. Now that this is all together, we're gonna get the French cleat on the back, and then we're gonna start sanding this and get the finish on. I've got a feeling this thing's gonna look amazing. Uh -huh. 